Hey there, Tad Arger from Marketing for Hippies, and this is for body workers uh, in particular who've been affected by the COVID-19 uh, business and also other businesses that maybe have been affected, but particularly I'm focusing on body workers. A uh, pitch I made in the past couple of videos and a blog post was about uh, this idea of creating packages, and there was some pushback or kind of questions around this, so I want to speak to it. And of course, I'm not a body worker, so there's going to be a lot I don't know. So please take all of this with a large dose of uh, salt. And uh, I'd love to hear your questions or pushback on this. And maybe together we can we can find some way forward that would be uh, genuinely useful for you. Uh, so a big thing here is this, it's obviously a time to get creative. If you just aren't having any clients right now, uh, if nobody's coming to see you and you need money, then, you know, I did a video before I said, basically you have three options right now. Number one is change nothing and just keep going and you know, work with whatever clients will come. Number two is just wait it out, you know, rely on your savings and go, hopefully it goes back to what it was before. Or number three, get creative and make some changes. So of course I'm banking on number three, making some changes. And uh, so packages are one idea, but the, here were some of the objections to it. Okay, so number one is that there's no insurance. That the kinds of packages I was talking about, a package that would be based on not just a number of sessions, but uh, addressing a particular issue, which is something we'll come back to in a bit, that there's no insurance wouldn't cover this because it's out of the scope of practice uh, of the certification. So here's something somebody said. They said, um, as an RMT, uh, we have some rules to follow. And things like packages of massage is not allowed on the medical system, which is 95% of my clients. I could come up with stretches and home care advice, but I do that with the ailments anyway, so I'm not sure how to price that, and they would not be able to claim uh, on that, that on medical, so it might be a hard sell. You can only issue a receipt once the service is provided, not in advance. Okay, so there's two separate issues. But basically saying, look, the reason people come to me is because, uh, you know, the reason I get so many clients is because they can claim it on their medical insurance and if they had to pay out of pocket, maybe they wouldn't come. Um, okay, so this is a really big thing. And it comes down to niching at the end of the day. Of course, it's a given that if people can do it basically for free, it just comes out of their insurance and they don't have to pay uh, from their own bank account, of course people are going to be more willing. Of course there's less risk financially for them to go and get massages. Uh, I get that. No matter how good you are at marketing, how niche down you are, that's going to be a factor. Okay, but there's nothing we can do about the fact that uh, people aren't coming to see you, so we're just trying to figure out other things to do. Hold on that thought. My dinner's ready. Uh, so then what can we do about this? Well, you could just keep trying to market the massage you're doing and yet wait, people aren't coming and you're already trying that. So if you're just getting no response, what about creating a package? Now, will be able, people be able to pay uh, for it with insurance? No, they'll be paying out of pocket. But if you're asking people, this is the challenge. When, when people rely on insurance, basically they're saying, well, I'm a massage therapist. I'm a generic massage therapist. I do what every other massage therapist does. That's basically what's being said. Uh, I do this modality, so if you're looking for this particular modality massage, you can get it for free with me because you can charge on insurance. But then of course, as soon as the money dries up, you notice those people are gone. Those people aren't coming back. Versus if you said, I'm not, yes, I'm a, primarily a body worker, but mostly what I help people do is make this journey from island A to island B. That's mostly what I do. I guarantee you those people would be less likely to drop out. Even if you just said, I'm only doing the body work, but I focus on this particular issue, I specialize in that way, those people would be less likely to drop out. Why? Because they're not just going for general stress and relaxation, they're going because there's a very specific journey that they're on. And if you come up with a package, and if the package, there's two different types of packages, I'll put a link to a video below. Basically one type of package is buy 10 for the price of nine, and the other type of package is uh, likely going to cost more actually than the number of sessions, but you bundle in a bunch of other things. And if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash premium, you can see what I'm talking about. I'll link to the other videos below that go into this. I'm just saying that that type of package will sell more. And if you had two uh, timelines, you could go down one timeline, you say, well, I'm just going to keep trying to promote the, mar the uh, massage work that I do, the craniosacral that I do. 
uh, and another one, one you say okay I'm gonna come up with a package that helps a particular group of people with a particular issue this package will sell better if you go into a, a pharmacy with migraines and there's one set of pills for ten dollars and it says generally get better pills and there's another set of pills for thirty dollars that says migraine be gone you will buy this one even though it's three times more this is what I'm saying. If you come up with a package, no, they won't pay with insurance, but you'll be more likely to get people for those packages, and those people would be more likely to be uh, loyal long-term. Stick around and spread the word, and now you get the benefits of word of mouth. I won't go into a whole pitch about niching. I'm just saying, it's a thing. I have a whole website about this. Um, okay. So the insurance is a be oh, this is another story I want to share about Marshall Rosenberg, who was the founder of uh, nonviolent communication. And he was a counselor of some sort, and he hated doing the paperwork. He, it just killed him. He couldn't bring himself, he just, oh God, why am I doing this? He almost wanted to quit his practice because it was such a drag. And then one day he asked himself, wait, why do I do this paperwork? Well, for the insurance money. He said, I don't care about the insurance money. It's not that much on top. So he just stopped doing the paperwork. And it just meant he lost the money. But you see what I'm saying? People will get into this thing and say, well, I can't do it. Wait a minute, you can't. You can't do it because you, you need to do the paperwork? According to whom? And this is a big question. I want every body worker and person whose business has been affected by this, who's feeling resistant, like, oh, I couldn't bring my business online. I couldn't come up with other packages. According to whom? Really? Based on what is this idea that you can't? Uh, you know, this this is maybe just a, a blind spot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and somebody says, well, we give certificates, we can sell the certificates, but they don't come with a receipt for medical claims. Still doesn't mean you can't sell them. Still doesn't mean you can't offer them. You know, I understand. Less people. Uh, yeah, than if they could pay with insurance, sure. But this is something that can be done. Okay, the ethics this is a big one. So, uh... Somebody was saying, well, uh, it's out of my scope of practice to offer some of the items you mentioned, a journal, recommending essential oil stretches. Somebody else said, uh, the question to seriously consider is what is, the uh, what is the professional adequately trained and or licensed in the scope of practice uh, to do no harm? Sure. Uh, the mention of creating a journal sounds outside of what a craniosacral therapist person is trained in, even if the person's uh, person if they have personal experience recovering from trauma. Or taking a weekend class in essential oils is vastly different than being trained as an aromatherapist. The intentions can be good and heartfelt, yet there can be very real gray areas in what your video mentions in creating packages. As a massage therapist, I can tell my clients stretches to do, but I cannot prescribe them. And that is what physical therapists do with much more training than I have uh, in the US. Uh, as your video suggests, I could offer a lot of supplemental things, but in fact, I could be falsely advertising my skill set. It's a different story if I was trained as a talk therapist or acupuncturist and what I could offer. Essential oils is not in our scope of practice. Right, and somebody else said, as a massage therapist and also a person who, who offers a Rosen method, another form of body work, I'm a body worker. I work with clients and I touch them. And right now, given the current state of things, I cannot touch people as much as I'd like to create something to supplement my income at the moment. It would be unethical for me to do so. Okay, so there's a lot to say here. First of all, amen, do no harm, right? There's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot of false advertising. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of people promising things they can just in no way deliver. Yes, that's all true. And we don't want to do that. Also true, great. And, um, whew, okay, so first of all, nobody's saying you can't in creating a package go to other colleagues who are qualified and ask for their support. No one's saying you couldn't go to those other co colleagues and invite them to offer some free time or discounted time or something as a part of the bundle. You might say, look, you know, uh, for this condition we're gonna be helping you with, having uh, personalized stretches is gonna be a really important thing. So basically when you sign up for this package, you have an hour of time with this professional person, you know, and you can work with them over Skype and they can give you some stretches to do that'll be personalized to your situation. Or, you know, it could be in person and whenever the time is that you feel comfortable seeing someone in person again, go see them. So th that's number one. You could just, think, you could partner with people who are qualified to do this. Second, you can, you could partner with them to offer some generic help. You could say, look, for this condition, here are the three biggest stretches that are generally the most useful. 
you know, I've got uh, very high arches on my feet. And so I, uh, it's, it, it's not plantar fasciitis, but sometimes, it, you know, if I'm carrying heavy things, walking a lot, it's pretty painful. It gets there. So I bought an online thing, and it was a guy who is an expert in this, walking me through the thing. Now, it's generic. You see what I'm saying? He hasn't evaluated me personally. It's generic. But you could do that. You could partner with people who already sell products like this. They might have never thought of creating a product like this. And you could say, would you create it? And I could sell it as a part of my thing. And this will also promote you. So you see what I'm saying? Even if you ask a friend who does yoga nidra, you say, give me three uh, free passes to your yoga nidra class, or just one. There's almost no hard cost to them unless they're turning people away. But you're doing marketing for them. You're getting a new person to them without doing anything. Number three. Okay, so number one is you could just partner with them straight up, book time with them. That could be part of the package. Number two, you could get some generic advice and help from them that they offer. But number three, you could also just say, look, this is my advice. I'm not trained in this. I'm not certified in this, but from my experience, my own learnings, this is what I'd recommend. You can just be very candid about your level of qualification. As long as you're not over-promising, as long as you're not representing yourself to have more qualifications than you do, it's good. You know what I'm saying? It's not a problem. This is not a... You got it. I just think we need to give people some credit to trust them. As long as you're not feigning an expertise, as long as you're naming where the expertise comes from, like, look, I'm not trained in this, but I myself overcame this condition, and here's what was most helpful for me, and I've also read a lot of books on it and thought about it and worked with clients over the years one-on-one, -on -one, and here's what's been most useful for them. As long as you can name where it comes from, it's fine. The, the ethics thing is, okay, here's the other thing with the ethics, is in the scope of practice. So let's say you're the massage therapist, and you say, well, um, or, well, I'll give the example I gave in the other video. There was a woman who does Ayurvedic nutrition and she decided she wanted to focus on people with fibromyalgia because she had overcome that herself. Now, she's not a medical doctor. She's not uh, the fibromyalgia specialist. She hasn't, you know, specialized in this for decades. But she does have personal experience. That is valid. As long as you're not misrepresenting it. You know, but she actually got herself over it. But there becomes, it's not, this is not a marketing issue. This becomes an identity issue. No, no, but I'm a massage therapist. I'm a, I'm a Ayurvedic nutritionist. No, you're a human being who uses a modality of that. And you probably have other, some people have more modalities than clients, you know? So, so this is an identity thing. I can't do this as a massage therapist. Great, then do it as a human being. Say, look, you know me as a massage therapist, but I also have these other skills, these other interests. I've had these experiences. I've overcome these things, and I'd like to offer this to you. Okay, then there's disapproval from the regulatory boards. A couple quotes from people, a few. Uh, if you offer packages or cut prices, uh, there's a feeling of betrayal of your colleagues, and then not having, oh yeah, she said, right, we're discouraged from cutting our prices and offering deals. We're all supposed to charge the same amount. Another person said, if we are allowed to undercut each other, where does it stop? Suddenly you're working for $5 an hour because someone else will do it for a few bucks less. Now, spas can get away with this because they aren't uh, charging government organizations for their fees, like the Blue Cross and all this. As an RMT, we have to present a united front. Okay, there's a few things. Amen to that. I do close-up magic. Uh, and every once in a while, people want to book me for shows. And the very first thing I do is I call my magician friends. I say, what do you charge these days for shows? And that's the price I charge. I don't undercut my fellow magicians. So there's that. But this is, again, it, it gets locked into, well, I couldn't do that because as a massage therapist, I have to have a united front with the other massage therapist. What I'm suggesting is you might create a package that is outside of the scope of massage therapy. That is not bound by that, where the massage therapy is one part of it. And you just offer this as a human being in the world, being helpful to other human beings. Um, yeah, so it's, I get the, the United Front, but I also get you got to pay rent. So um, this is about creating something that is not a commodity, creating something that is not comparable to other people. That is not what every other massage therapist or body worker is offering. This is what I'm suggesting. Creating something new, uh, astonishing, uh, remarkable, niched, that helps a particular group of people with a particular problem. That type of package, not the package based on number of sessions, but a package based on helping people on a particular journey. There's a lot more to say about niching. There's other places, you can go to nichingspiral.com. Uh, lots of thoughts on this. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your pushback, your reticence, your yeah buts. Uh, put them in the comments below. I hope this was helpful.
take care. Oh, and if you like this video, click subscribe, click the little bell button if it's on YouTube, like my channel, share this video. Uh, thank you. I hope you're all staying safe.